we're going to be talking about geometric series and also a little revision again of a sigma notation. By the way, I like this meme right here with the 1 over x sine x. I know it's an old one, but I like it. You cross off the ends. Ha ha. So do you remember what a series is? A series is the sum of the terms, right? Sum. And what does that mean for a sum? It means just add. Like you sort of add up. You add up all the terms in a geometric sequence. What does it mean to be geometric? Let's maybe try to remember that. Remember what geometric means? It means common ratio, which means you're always multiplying by the same number. So that common ratio is going to be called R. And remember that we also have the uh, first term. Don't forget about that. You know, the first term is uh, called U1. You know, the nth term is called UN. Now, in this case right here, we have the sum of n terms in a finite geometric sequence. Finite means it's, it's one where you actually have an ending to it. So something where you actually say start here, finish here. So uh, because there exists something else that's called infinite. So sometimes you can add up, you know, infinite number of terms. Maybe there's an answer. Maybe there's an answer. It's just infinity. But in this case right here, we're going to actually say where to stop. So in your formula book, they actually have this equation for you as well. We write S for the sum n for the nth term, right? So it is sum of the nth term. Now it's defined by u1, so that one right there. And we also have, uh, how's it goes, r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So it just depends on which term you want. Now we have another version of it as well. It's just a basically the, you, know, you can say 1 minus r to the n over uh, 1 minus r. So this is the equation that we're going to be using. It's going to be uh, helpful for us. Uh, let's actually try to put it in practice. Well, uh, by the way, are there any limitations to this? Um, there is. There's an issue with the domain. Uh, this one here, you cannot make r1, because if you make r equal to 1, 1 minus 1 gives you 0. You can't divide by 0, so we'll say r can't be 1. There we go. I think that'll be good. So this here is how we're going to, or what we're going to use. Let's actually put it into practice with an example. So here we want the sum of the first eight terms in this geometric sequence. So it goes 20, minus 10, 5, minus 5 over 2, and so on. Now, by the way, if you actually wanted to write the list as one whole list, we could. Uh, do you notice the pattern, by the way? So I'm just going to write them all out like this because I'm going to keep going. Right? 5, 5 halves. Now, there's a negative, of course. Can we keep going? You see the pattern. The pattern is to divide by 2, but change the sign. In other words, I know already, I know likely what r is going to be, the common ratio. We often just say, take a term, divide it by the term before it. So in this case here, I'll take negative 10 over 20. Well, that gives me, let's say they both divide by 10, I end up with 1 over 2. I could also do 5 over negative 10, it's the same thing. So in other words, I know that r equals minus 1 half. That's going to be useful in doing this. But it's also useful if I sort of want to cheat. I'm going to show you two ways to solve this. So if I keep going with this right here, do you notice I'm just I'm just changing the sign each time. That's what the minus does. I'm dividing by 2. So what's the next term? Well, the next term is going to be to change the sign and divide by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then I'm going to do it again. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. It'll still be 5 with a minus this time. It'll change the sign. That'll be minus 5 over, let's see, 8 times 2 is 16. You know, then it keeps going, and it's going to be 5 positive this time. Wait a second. I have to be very careful with my signs, don't I? I think I made a mistake, didn't I? They can't both be negative. They have to switch signs each time. It's plus, negative, plus, negative, plus, negative, plus. So I need a minus here. And 16 times 2 is 32. And I could keep going, couldn't I? Like this right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need the first 8 terms. So if I really want to do it, I suppose I could actually just do this I mean, on my calculator, I guess. I mean, because there's only the first 8 terms, I suppose I could cheat and sort of just do it that way. I mean, that's kind of cheating, isn't it? So let's just, uh, that's kind of cheating, maybe? Maybe not, I don't know. Let's actually uh, open up the calculator and see if I could do that. So let me do a new document here. I'm going to do a new calculator. Just to show you right here, I could do 20. And again, just to generate these right here, I want to show you also a faster trick to generate things. Because I'm always multiplying by negative 0.5, which is what a half is, right? That's my second term. If I want the next term, I just do answer times minus 0.5. 
And do you notice every term now that I do, if I just keep pressing enter, it's just going to keep doing the same thing. So watch, this is the third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, eighth term. So this right here is what uh, these different terms are. That's what minus 5 over 32 is. Let's see if that's right. Minus 5 divided by 32 should be. Oops, I guess I have to say approximate. Look, it's the same. So these are just the fraction forms. Let's do it properly. Let's do it formally with the equation. I just wanted to show you. You could sort of be cheap about it if you have a calculator. Let's do it without a calculator. Let's see how to do this with this equation. So again, we're just going to plug this into the equation. We need S N to the nth term, right? So it's u1 times r to the n minus 1, all that over r minus 1. Good idea to show the equation. Now we just show our substitution. We want s8. Well, what's that going to be? u1 is the first term, which is 20. So I put down 20 here. Then I'll say, all right, r is minus 1 half. I'll say that's to the power of n, which is 8. All that minus 1, all that divided by minus 1 half minus 1. Again, you could use your calculator for any of these steps you wanted, if you're allowed one. Um, I'm just going to try to do it without a calculator. So minus 1, well, minus anything to an even exponent will mean it'll be plus. So I know the answer will be a plus. 1 to the 8 is just 1. 2 to the 8, however, is uh, maybe not that that uh, simple to think about. You have to think about it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 8 times. Well, that give me that'll be 2, 2, 256. Yeah, 256, that'll be it. Uh, all that minus 1, all that over oh, minus 1 half minus 1. And just to show you, I'm going to make a common denominator. So it's minus, uh, I'll make it 2 over 2, because that'll give me, give me what I need. I'll make this one here a common denominator as well. I'll make it uh, 1 over 256. I'll make that minus, well, I need 256 over 256, because I need what's 1. And minus 1 half minus 1 half is minus 3 halves. All right, so I keep going. So, I mean, I'm just doing it by hand. It's, it's slightly annoying, sure, but it's doable. All right, what's 1 minus 256? Well, that's minus 255. All that over 256. That looks kind of gross, doesn't it? And what happens when I divide by a fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to say times. I'm going to flip it. So 2 over 3, and don't forget there was a minus there. The minuses are going to cancel out, so that's kind of nice. So I'm going to end up with, uh, let's see here. I guess I'll just cancel out those ones right here. I'll just say, all right, well, those are gonna, those are gonna cancel out. Um, I can say two times uh, twenty. That's gonna give me forty. That'll be over three, and I'll do all that times uh, two fifty-five over two fifty-six. Um, what'll that be? That'll be. I guess I can just use my calculator if I'm feeling really lazy. What's two fifty-five? over 256, I get that, oh that's nice, it doesn't really reduce, times 40, divide that by 3. I end up with 425 over 32, so that's my exact answer. And if I want an approximate, of course I can just say, please give me the approximate, whoops, answer, and I'll say give me the approximate answer. So it's 13 point, well to three significant figures it'll be 13.3. .3. So I'll put approximately 13.3. Oops, that's not a 3. That's a 3. There we go. So it was pretty long, this example. I think uh, doing it like this was maybe a little bit annoying, but there we go. We at least got an answer. Let's do the next one. It's a little bit harder looking, at least. Um, I thought this was just funny. I don't know why I just like this so much, but Roger Federer. There's a little meme that says that 50% of his uh, last name is Federer. Actually, 50% of his whole name, so this is Roger Federer. So you can see, ha, 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 look, there's lots of ERs in there. Uh, okay, let's actually open this one. Remember how to deal with sigma notation? This just means start here, finish here. And remember what sigma means? That just means add up. So this is like a series. So although it looks really complicated, we could just open this one up. We can actually just, you know, say, all right, we'll start off with one. We'll start off with k equals one, which means I'm going to have three times one third times one minus one. I'll just write it all out like this. Then it says to add up, right? That's what sigma means. So I go plus. And I do the same recipe here, three times one third times and the, uh, to the power of, 
This time I make k one more. So I start off at one, I have to do k equals two. See, I need to do k equals one, k equals two, k equals three, and k equals four. And I gotta stop there, because it says start at k equals one, stop at four. So that means I make it two minus one here, because it's the next index up. All right, and I'll just keep going like this, so one third to the three minus one, and three times one third to the four minus one. Let's do this by hand, we don't need a calculator for this. One minus one just gives me zero. All right, um, let's see this one here, this is just a one. So one to the one is just one, three to the one is just three, so that's kind of nice. How about this one right here? Let's see, we've got, this is squared by the way, so one squared is just one. Three squared, however, is nine. Then I keep going, let's see, I got this is cubed, one cubed is still one. Three cubed, however, is three times three times three, so that's nine times three, which is 27. All right. Well, let's figure this out. Anything to the power of zero, what's that give you? That gives you one. So the answer then will just be three here. All right, what does three over three give you? I mean, those will cancel out. The one does nothing, right? So three times one is just three. Three over three is just one. So it just cancels out. Keep in mind, it doesn't give zero, it gives you one. Keep going then, three over nine, what's that? Three divided by nine is actually one third. And what's three over 27? That's just gonna be one ninth. Do you notice then? that I could actually do this then by hand, right? I could actually sit there and, and calculate all this. I'll make them all over nine, I guess, just to get a common denominator. If I'm not allowed a calculator, at least, I'll get them all over nine. That's what I need to get. All right, I have four terms. Let's see, this one over nine, that one's easy. It stays that way. The three, to get to nine, you have to do three times three. So one times three is three. This one right here, well, right now, I've got kind of a one right now. One times nine just gives me nine. So one times nine, that's just that. And uh, this one right here, I gotta go three times nine, that's 27. All right, uh, nine plus one is 10. So that gives me 10, plus 27 is 37. Uh, that'll give me 40 over nine. So this right here will be my exact answer. And I'm done, turns out. So this is the, the full answer here, I'm, I'm finished. Okay, so that's kind of nice. You could have done it another way. So this is sort of one method, right? I'll maybe call this method one. Call this method one, which is to actually open it up, right? So this is sort of, you just sort of open up the sigma. That's really what we did. We just took that sigma, we just sort of opened everything up. But we have another method, I suppose. We could sort of see it as geometric. I thought that's maybe a way we could do it. Now, um, you don't necessarily need to go through all the details here, but I can uh, just show you how to set it up. You can recognize this thing right here. Do you notice? Doesn't it look geometric? To be geometric, remember how the terms go. The, the has to be in the form un equals u1 times r to the n minus one. Do you notice it's set up like that? Look, u1 is three. r is one third. Do you recognize that? Look, un r to the n minus one. So if I just did the sum of the first, well, in this case, four terms, I would do the first four terms, right? So that's just what I would have to calculate. Well, I could just put that in my calculator and I could, uh, or at least I could slowly do this all by hand. So there's a bunch of ways of doing this. You, know, you could keep going like this. I just wanted to show you at least, you could have done it this way as well, just to recognize that it's geometric.